Egypt is a country known for many different things, both ancient and modern, but one thing that it's not known for, at least on an international scale, is trucking. As you could probably guess, in a country composed of 95% desert, almost all roads traveled by truckers are concentrated in or around the Nile River and the Nile River Delta. Egypt's road network, as of 2020, stands at 65,050 kilometers in length, with around 74% of those roads being paved. One of these paved roads is actually the oldest in the world, the Giza Road, which has stood for around 4,600 years. Though you won't see any trucks hauling goods on this stretch, it was at one point used for the transport of the enormous basalt blocks which were used to build the pyramids of Giza. Today, many of Egypt's roads are faced with an all-too-common problem in the modern world, traffic. In the Cairo metropolitan area, traffic congestion is ranked fourth worst in the world as of 2017. While this issue is an inconvenience and a source of annoyance for many Kyrene citizens, those who make their living on the road dread the time they must spend around Egypt's largest city. The traffic problems are so bad in this area that the government of Egypt has spent absurd amounts of money to create a new Cairo in the desert to the east under the guise of alleviating traffic issues. Only time will tell if this expensive decision bears any fruit. Egypt is a country with two distinctly different regions, which I will simply refer to as desert and fertile. On a map, it's pretty clear where the line is drawn between the two, but this difference goes far beyond the colors green and tan. The fertile areas of the country are significantly denser than the desert regions because they house 95% of Egypt's population. The cities here are incredibly compact to preserve space for agriculture, leading buildings to be much taller and thinner. Roads are also narrow and traffic is somewhat self-regulating, meaning that there aren't any traffic signs or lights, with most roads lacking lines or other markings. This is not to say that the cities completely lack these amenities, but they're more infrequent than most American or European roads. To an outsider, this traffic flow may seem incredibly chaotic, but it comes naturally to those who spent enough time on Egyptian roads. The highways which connect urban centers tend to be fairly wide depending on area. For example, around Cairo many of the highways are 8 to 14 lanes in width, while outside of the metro, 6 lanes seems to be the standard. But if we leave the fertile areas and plunge into the desert, as some truckers find themselves doing, we are met with the other side of Egyptian trucking. In the western desert, the largest in the country, roads seem to go on endlessly. Most highways here are constructed to curve through the infrequent physical barriers in the desert and often feature long segments where the road is completely straight and flat. Heat and dehydration are the largest issues in the desert, and due to low traffic volumes, breakdowns can have their drivers waiting hours before rescue comes, if it comes at all. So, what trucks could hold up in the Egyptian heat, able to handle both the wide roads of the desert and the cramped frenzy of the cities? Well, be it due to proximity or robustness, European brands are favored in this area of the world, most of them of a cab over variety. You will see all sorts of European named trucks driving down Egyptian roads, some of which originate from or are headed to the European continent itself, with the occasional Asian branded truck every now and then. A career spent on Egyptian highways is one heavy with historical significance and cultural experience. And whether you're driving parallel to the Nile River, across the endless dunes of the western desert, or through the tight streets of North Africa's largest city, I'd like to extend my thanks to these truck drivers for the important work that they do. Thanks for watching, and let me know what video you'd like to see next. To any of you wondering, I do read the comments and usually select my next topic based on them, so comment away if you so choose. Thanks again and goodbye.